Donna, please tell Jimmy we miss him a lot, and uh, yeah. if I ever make it to Phoenix, well, I doubt I ever will. I will get in touch. Thank you. Hey, hey. Shop looks good. Same old shit. I believe this weather. It's hot. It's cold. It's hot. Cold again. Joey Bagels? How'd you guess? Holy shit. Yeah. So young. What happened? Someone punched his ticket? Yeah, God. Clogged arteries. Look, Ali, I appreciate you helping me with this. Get just to this business deal goes through, all right? Um, after you called, I spoke to Ann about this, okay? Ali, they just need to see I got a job, and then I'll get out of your hair. I can't put you on the books, OK? Uh, she doesn't think it's a good idea to lie to your parole officer. Hi. And I don't either, OK? Right. What if they come in here, they start asking questions, they nobody's, start looking... Nobody's going to ask any questions. Well, how do you know what they're going to do? So you're not going to help me with this? No. Can I help you, ma'am? I didn't mean to interrupt. This is Rose. She's from Queens. It's my girlfriend. Welcome, guys. How's it going? You're premiering tonight. Nervous? Excited? Yes, nervous. Nervous? <laughs> so this yeah. is your second film. All of you probably know him as one of the stars of Orange is the New Black. But uh, Nick is also a filmmaker. That's right. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is my second go at it. Yeah. Second go at it. Second go at it. Yeah, and it's a great go at it. I actually got to see the film prior to talking with you guys today, which is awesome. But uh, be sure to check it out. I think it's going to screen how many more times during the festival? Uh, three? I think we have four, four, four screenings all together. We premiere three after the premiere, yeah. OK. So let's talk about this Boardwalk Empire connection, because all three of you have starred in the show. Um, Patricia Arquette has also featured prominently on the show. Yes. Um, and Marty, uh, Martin Scorsese, is an executive producer on this film. And he, as you know, you know, created Boardwalk Empire. Can you take me through that and unpack exactly how this film came to be? Yeah, all leads, <laughs> all, all roads lead to Boardwalk. Yeah, go ahead. It, yeah, it was a very funny uh, bit of synchronicity in the whole thing. Uh, I was asked to do a reading of uh, the screenplay of the Wannabe that Nick had written, and uh, we met at that reading. And I said, it's really wonderful, and we exchanged, you know, pleasantries. And a few months later, Nick was cast, maybe it was a few weeks later. Yeah. He was cast as Waxy Gordon, and we're in a scene together on Boardwalk. And I was like, wow, that's, that's really great. And then months after that, a follow-up asked how the script's going, and we agreed to tackle it together. And I yeah. said, I'll option it, and he'll direct it. And we started getting into the work. And then we said, who would be a great Rose? And we were like, Patricia Arquette. Yeah, yeah. Reach out to Patricia. And, and Michael is a connection to Patricia. Yeah, they had Mike, worked on something. They worked on we, we did an indie movie in uh, Germany uh, like the year before you were casting. That's, that's right. That's, and I had mentioned to him, and he was like, oh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll email. Yeah, and through their friendship, Michael came on and, uh, you know, for, for that at that point. And then Patricia came on. And then maybe a month after Patricia came on, she was cast on Boardwalk by coincidence. Yes. And then we fell in love with this Sicilian actor That's right. to play Richie in the film, Vincenzo Amato. So we meet with him for lunch. And then I get a phone call like a week later. He's like, uh, Viche, I don't know if this is because of our lunch, but I have a role on Boardwalk Empire. <laughs> and I said, no, it's not. It's just all this momentum built, right. and then I uh, sent over the, the script on some good advice to Mr. Scorsese, and I see him at the next table read on Boardwalk, and he goes, yeah, I want to help you out, and talk to my agent, and I'll, I'll come on and, and help you guys, so it speaks to his yeah. generosity for young filmmakers. Right on, and Dominic Lombardozzi. And Dominic, Dominic Lombardozzi. Right. Yeah. He yeah. was also Boardwalk. He was on Boardwalk, he played Ralph Capone. So it's Boardwalk set in the 90s. So that's the movie. <laughs> in Queens. In Queens. Second time filmmaker, you must have been terrified to show your film to Marty. Can you tell me about what that was like <laughs> and what his initial reaction was to the first cut? Yeah, it was, 
it was terrifying. And I remember going up with Vincent to meet him, and I was so nervous. <laughs> I was so nervous. And we, you know, met at his house and sat on his couch, and we sat on, uh, looking across. I could see all the, the statues. I could see the Oscar. I could see he had a lot of hardware, a lot of, uh, a lot of statues. And we were just sitting, waiting for him to come down. And then as soon as he got there, I just, it was like we were with, you know, somebody really safe and disarmed us. And I felt like he, you know, sometimes you meet somebody with, you know, they want to give you notes and they, they have an agenda. And I, I felt like his was, he was just trying to get to what we were trying to say. And he didn't have an agenda. And I felt like so safe there, which was pretty amazing. So, yeah, he, it's that kind of, he has that kind of spirit. He loves film. He loves making movies, you know. Going to be there tonight? Oh, no, he's in Taipei. He's shooting a film. Oh, shooting a movie. All right. He's shooting a movie, yes. That's a good excuse. Yeah. Um, so since no one's here has seen the film, and there's obviously no trailer because the film uh, doesn't ever release it yet because it's, you know, premiering at a festival for, for acquisition, can one of you kind of unpack exactly what the film is about, just so everyone knows what we're talking well, about? Well, yeah, I think you could. Okay. Um, well, on, on, on its surface, the, the film t uh, takes place in New York City in the early 90s, and uh, it, there are two characters played by Vincent Piazza and Patricia Arquette. Uh, the backdrop is the John Gotti trial, and they meet and attempt to fix that trial and go on a pretty wild ride. Um, so that's where it sits on its surface. And underneath it, 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 it's about this desperate desire to want to be something you're not. And I think that that's what, when we jumped in, we, we were like, OK, this is, this is what we want to get underneath. This is what we want to explore. These are the questions we want to ask ourselves. And also how you know, there's a mythology of, of movies and cinema and how that affects who we are and who we want to be. So, yeah. It's loosely based on a true story. Yes. When did you first hear about these two, and what about them really fascinated you and made you want to bring their story to the screen? Yeah, you know, there were uh, like a half dozen newspaper articles, pr probably 10 years after uh, they were killed, and there, there wasn't too much information. There was just a handful of facts, and I... I got fascinated with this character who I started to imagine is, you know, pressing his nose up against the glass and wanting to become desperately a part of something. Um, I grew up in, an, an, actually, a neighborhood five minutes from Thomas. Um, so the world was, you know, I, I also, as an actor, grew up spending the last 20 years of my career trying to be someone <laughs> Someone else. So this idea of having a character uh, wanting and needing this just got me going. Yeah. And Michael, you've been involved with two of the you know most uh, acclaimed and classic uh, gangster epics of all time. I'm talking about The Sopranos and Goodfellas. Uh, you've no doubt probably come across a lot of gangster-related uh, scripts. What did you make of this one when you first uh, when you first read it? Um, well, the first thing is that Nikki wrote it, so. That makes me excited because Nick and I have been friends for a long time. And we have a long collaborative history in movies and theater. And we actually directed each other in movies and directed each other in plays and stuff like that. So we've done a lot. So, you know, that's exciting. But, um, you know, I, I, we had had conversations about it. And, I, and, I, and you developed it for a while. It was yeah. over a long period of time. And uh, it seemed really right what he and I think to me what inspired me and excited me is that taking an aspect of history and then weaving some you know like a almost like a uh, fable around it or cautionary tale or something that that uh, that he was able to create around these threads of historical fact was it always your intention to direct it when you first started to write it or did that kind of come later in the process it, it did come a little later. You know, I had just finished doing Ponies, and I wrote this, and I talked to my manager, Mike Gasparro, who was a producer on the film, and I said, well, do people sell screenplays? Maybe well, that's what I'll do. And, and then he said, well, yeah, they can option them, and these people want to option it. 
And they told me the money, and I was like, wow, that's really bad acting money. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's really bad. You mean guys work this hard and make that? And I was like, well, nah. And then Ponies sort of happened for me, and I was like, yes, I want to I wanna direct this. And, th and then, you know, I, I went into the, the reading uh, not knowing Vincent's work. I mean, I saw him a little bit on Boardwalk, and I thought he was great, and, but I didn't really know him. And he did the reading, and I was like, whoa, this kid is great. I mean, I just couldn't imagine anybody else. And then, you know, we, we meet on the set of Boardwalk, and I, I, said, he, I still wasn't sure what I was doing with it. And he said, listen, you know, let me know, because we can do this. We can get this done. And I then made the decision, and I, did, I finished a rewrite. And the, the second I finished it, it, an email came up, and it was... It was Vinny, He's, and we weren't really friendly. And he said, I want to know what you're doing with that script. And I called him, and he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to direct it. He said, I can get this made. And he did it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have him screen test? Did you have uh, him screen test with Patricia? Because your chemistry in the film is pretty extraordinary. You guys are pretty hot for each other. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, um, uh, Patricia is, uh, is one of the most generous actors uh, that you can imagine being paired up with. And uh, when she agreed to do it, uh, we had multiple conversations. Um, uh, she um, was discussing the character in, in the perfect way in the relationship. And then I went out to LA. The whole thing was like a giant treadmill because I was shooting Boardwalk, and then I was lucky enough to be cast in Jersey Boys, and I was shooting that in LA. And every day I had off, I was like calling Patricia to like, can we talk about this? Because two weeks after Jersey Boy ends, I have to go shoot, we're ready to shoot Wannabe. Right. So we would sit and read plays and talk and um, just form a relationship. So that way it's not as um, uh, immediate as having to form it on the set. So it was really a nice way to whisk into this world. Uh, and she, again, she was just um, a joy. Uh, to work with throughout this. So now you brought up Jersey Boys, I have to ask, how does Clint, you know, another actor, director, compare to Nick? Well, it's interesting. There, there's a really Sorry. wonderful um, quality that both of them have on set, uh, probably because they were both actors, uh, to let actors entertain impulses and uh, very gentle um, to, to not disrupt maybe the relationship or what's happening in the scene. And he's really adept at that. So that was uh, a really nice quality to, uh, to, I was spoiled rotten. I go Clint Eastwood and then I get Nick on set and it was this seamless, wonderful ride for those few months. Very cool. Can we talk about your approach as a filmmaker, at, you know, as an actor, full-time actor, this is what you do, you know, your day job, you made two films now. Do you take a kind of actor-first approach when directing a film? Is it all about the character for you? Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I, for me, what's most important is what's happening between two people first. That's first. Like, let's figure that out. Let's, let's not, uh, you know, I, I shot lists, I build stuff, but I also, I leave room for you know, uh, for the actors to follow their impulse, like, uh, like Vinny says. And it's like, we get this down first. You know, some sets you show up, you, you rehearse for camera, you know, you rehearse for camera. You're not even rehearsing the scene. You, you show up and you're rehearsing for camera and the, everything is built around where the camera is going to be and where it's not going to be. And you, you sort of slowly but surely you're put in this little box. And if you're doing it long enough, you can come off real, barely. <laughs> right? But, you know, if you open that up and you give actors a chance to really, really explore and fo follow what's going on uh, inside the scene, you never know what you're going to get. And also not, you know, I don't strap people to the dialogue. I, I never, you know, listen, we know what needs to happen in the scene. We know the beginning, we know the middle, we know the end, we know where it goes. Get there. And to me, if you watch films that are made that way, there is a certain energy in, in the acting that you just, you know, it's golden. And when films are not made that way, it's not the same. Yeah, and I just prefer the other. Yeah. 
You really couldn't have asked for better timing given Patricia Arquette's Oscar win. I mean, that film shot for eight years, so had this film, you know, been made, I don't know, two years ago before Boyhood came out, yeah. you know, the film wouldn't be uh, receiving the kind of attention it's been receiving at Tribeca based on, you know, her stature and the fact that she's in the news right now. Wh where were you guys all when she won, and what was it like to kind of witness that past year for her given your, you know, your close relationship with Patricia? I, it was pretty wild. She was on set. She's like, oh, I, well, when we were working, she was like, I do this sort of strange independent thing every two <laughs> week, two weeks a year. With, you know, it's this small thing. And then, you know, she's winning an Oscar for it. I, I mean, I, I saw her, you know, we were at the SAG Awards together and uh, um, seeing her win those awards, I did a lot of fist pumping, you know. I was really excited for her. It's pretty amazing to, to witness that you know, somebody uh, go through that. So, yeah, I was... And not to mention, yeah, it's like stepping in crap, you know, like, oh, my God. You're, you're her first post-Oscar movie. I mean, yes. she's on CSI now, but yes. your film is the first film she's appearing That's in. That's right. Yeah. Boy. I feel lucky. Yeah, we got lucky. We're going to open it up to the audience. If you have a question, please just raise your hand, and there's uh, someone going around with the mic. Hi. Thank you all for coming. First of all, I'm a huge fan of all of yours. And my question is about TV, even though I know we're here to talk about a movie. Um, I've been binge watching Sopranos and Boardwalk and Orange is the New Black over and over again. And I love all of your characters, but I have a very special place in my heart for Christopher. <laughs> and I just wanted to know what TV shows do you guys binge watch? Like streaming, if any. <laughs> Give you time to think about it. <laughs> what do I binge watch? Um, I uh, House of Cards. I binge watched, and um, you know, uh, usually I'm behind, so I get to uh, the girls. I, I I watch girls. I like that show a lot. Um, that that's all I can think of. Um, I watch a lot of cooking shows, like Anthony Bourdain and. Uh, Lydia, Lydia's Italy, um, travel shows. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah I, um, I, I guess uh, I've watched some, uh, I think I, I binge watched uh, recently um, How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then... Did um, you like how um, it ended? Yeah. What's that? Did you like how it ended? I did, yeah. I did. I felt like, come on. Come on, you know, some twists and let's get to it. There was another season. All right, I think we're there, and there's another season. Anyway, it was, I had to get through it, but um, it was fun. And uh, the other one that I'm about to watch, that I'm excited to watch, is Daredevil. A buddy of mine is on uh, Charlie, who's on Boardwalk with us, uh, Charlie Cox. Uh, I can't wait to see Daredevil. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I will. Hello. Uh, as a young actor, when you go into the room and audition and you get turned down a lot, um, sometimes you get discouraged. What kept you going? Um, what was the best advice that you received? And Michael, do you shoot someone in the foot or does someone shoot you in the foot? <laughs> do I? I, don't, I have had it happen both ways, actually. Um, in this movie, no, I don't shoot anybody. Um, but... Uh, yeah, you have to have an unshakable sense that you are meant to do this. And don't let anybody... Always remember that it's only just an opinion when anybody says yes or no. And you don't, often don't get parts for a hundred other things than your talent. It's because you're too short or you're too tall or your hair is this color or... You know, they envision something different, or the producers dating the you know another someone else. You know, all that kind of stuff. But um, so you can't take internalize that and and take that in about make that about yourself. But you you kind of have to be um, kind of deluded a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'm, I, that sounds like a joke and sarcastic, but in another sense, it's not. In hindsight, it's kind. I I think it's true. But you really have to have that unshakable sense that you're meant to do this and you, know, and you have to be patient. Hey guys, uh, you said the movie takes place in Queens, right? 
I was just curious if uh, most of it was filmed in Queens, and if so, which parts of Queens was it filmed in? Most of it is in Brooklyn. Uh, we, most of our sets were uh, in, we, we shot in Bay Ridge, but we shot in Queens also. We shot in the Bronx too. Where do we shoot in Queens? We, sh we shot um, uh, Sunnyside, I believe, and then it was in Maspeth. There was um, a great sequence near the end of the film uh, I grew up in Queens, and there was this one industrial area where my father has his construction oh, right. yard. Yeah. And we talked about it, and we took a drive by there, and it's really desolate and hasn't been changed in many, many years. And uh, it was just the perfect spot to kind of yeah. harken back to that time. Really beautiful, by Calvary Cemetery and uh, the, the skyline. And also Ridgewood, right? We, oh, we shot Ridgewood. in Ridgewood. Yeah, yeah, we shot yeah. in Ridgewood, Ridgewood. Queens. Uh, it was the store, the Flourish. Uh, that was Brooklyn. Oh, that was in Brooklyn. That was in like a uh, little beyond Bay Ridge or somewhere. Yeah. It's back. it's hard to remember because we did what thirty locations in twenty days. Thirty locations, twenty days. So we were little frogs hopping. Yes. Yeah. Also, the the court uh, the courthouses were in the Bronx, too. So we we hit all those boroughs. Yeah. Wait a second. Um, I understand, Vincent, that you're a producer on the movie. Uh, how do you feel about that? Um, well, thank you. I, I, um, I'd never sat in, in a seat like that uh, producing anything. And uh, again, Nick you know, generously agreed to come on, uh, kind of a hope and a dream for the two of us. And through the process, I got to see all the different layers of effort that go into filmmaking. And it was a for me, a masterclass to just kind of soak up all what's happening and, and learn as we go. And, and um, really, um, the gratitude for every department and the effort people bring in indie film in New York, it's really an unbelievable challenge to pull off. And when it does come together, it really deserves, you know, these people deserve recognition. I mean, working crazy hours for virtually no pay because they believe in something in the cold. Uh, under a lot of uh, challenging, dramatic storylines, so there's moods and temperatures to deal with, and uh, it was a great, great thing to be a part of. This is for Nick. Um, yeah. What kind of movie do you wanna, is the next movie that you wanna direct at? How can I say this? Um, as a director, you know, you, there's always a, a movie that you wanna do you know, passionately, like, but sometimes you, you know, don't know if you're gonna get the funding or not. What kind of movie do you want? Do you want to direct for your third film? Yeah, I, I have a couple of ideas. I'm I'm banging around. A couple of things I'm looking at. I have uh, two stories, uh, one bigger, one smaller, depending on how much money I can <laughs> I can raise after this one or not. Um, but yeah, I have two stories, and and, and you know it's, it's similar. I think uh, both of them again deal with identity very much like this. But one one is um, about a. a a small um, day in the life, almost, of a, uh, um, a retired football player who's suffering with dementia, and it's pre-concussion consciousness, so everybody thinks he's crazy. And um, So there's that story, and it's a very sort of minimalist story. And I have another one um, that I'm excited about, based on a real person. Um, about a kid who went and um, fought in uh, Syria, fought the revolution in Syria, an American kid who was uh, an ex-soldier and really had no idea who he was fighting for or really why he was. He was just sort of, you know, had a lot of spirit, but he was misguided. I, I, he reminds me very much of Thomas, sort of the, uh, the wannabe soldier in a way, or revolutionary, and I'm, I'm really attracted to that story. And, so those, those, those two are, I, I would love to do, yeah. We have time for one more question. Hi. Uh, were there any Italian-American stereotypes that you were careful to avoid in this film, seeing that you all have been in quite a few Italian-based? Yeah, you know, I'd, uh, I think we, we, we all come from an Italian-American background, so it, I think it was really easy for us to stay away from it. I mean, we, we just were going after a, 
a real sense of truth, and we know that and intrinsically. I don't. So there was never really a that big. Of, the stakes were never high that way. Or like, oh, that's a stereotype. I, we wouldn't know how to do it. Is stereotypically. I don't think. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that it it addresses the cliche. Oh, yes. Yeah. It, the whole film, in a sense, dives headfirst into what people think it is or think they want to be and in that world. So uh, in a way it was, uh, I think someone used cathartic earlier, like to right. then go and, and explore why people are interested in this and why they make these choices to, you know, do certain things. Well, thank you so much and have an amazing premiere thank tonight. You. Congratulations on the movie. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.